the complexity of anonymous communications through public networks. My name is Miguni Ando. I'm currently a researcher at MITRE. This is joint work with Anna Lesiotskaya and Elliot LeFull at Brown University. Suppose that Alice wants to send a message to David so that no one can tell that she's communicating with David. What can she do? Well, encryption by itself is not going to solve the problem because, well, she can encrypt her message so that no one can tell what it is she's sending to David. But an adversary that can view the network traffic can see the same sequence of bits uh, going out of Alice's computer and going into David's, and so can connect the fact that Alice is communicating with David. So what can we do? A practical approach is onion routing. Uh, in onion routing, Alice first picks a routing path for the message. In this example, it is Bob, Charlie, then David. And she produces a layered encryption object called an onion, which she can just send to the first uh, intermediary on the routing path, Bob. Bob can decrypt just the outermost layer of this um, encryption object, onion, revealing an inner onion and a next destination for the onion. And sometimes we refer to this process as peeling an onion because it is like removing the outermost layer of the onion. And this process can continue so that eventually David is able to get his message from Alice. Why is this helpful? The idea is that um, onions can mix at honest nose. So suppose that we have two onions here in this example, a purple onion and an orange onion being received at the same honest node. Now, if these two onions are simultaneously processed in the same batch, then when the onions come out of the node, then it is not possible to tell which uh, input onion turned into which output onion. So did the uh, purple onion peel, revealing a green onion, and the orange uh, onion peel, revealing a white onion, or was it the other way around? So this mixing that happens at honest nose is precisely how we can achieve anonymity from an adversary who can view the network traffic. So first, let's define what we mean by anonymity a little bit more rigorously. So what is the best we can really hope to achieve? Well, suppose that we have our n parties and each party is given an input instructing them to send a message to some other party. Well, what we can do uh, in the best case scenario uh, is for each party to write their message to the recipient in a piece of paper, fold it, put it in a blank envelope, and give this envelope to a trusted party who shuffles them and uh, in some random order, takes a peek into the envelope and sends it to the, to the final destination, to the recipient. Now, is anonymous because uh, the adversary cannot tell which sender was communicating with which recipient. Um, and so we say that a protocol achieves uh, anonymity if, it, if the adversary cannot tell if the protocol ran on input zero or on input one, unless of course it is revealed by uh, the volume of messages that are being sent, or the volume of messages that are being received, or by the content of the messages at corrupt parties. 
in our paper, in this paper, we're concerned with a scenario where the adversary is active. What we mean by that is that the adversary can view the network traffic and also additionally corrupt a constant fraction of the parties and control them to behave in any arbitrary way. So in particular, the corrupted parties can deviate from the protocol. So what we want is to have anonymity from the active adversary. Uh, and we also want what we call robustness because the active adversary can direct corrupted parties to drop uh, onions or message packets. And in this case, we want that even if some were dropped, that the remaining messages can still be delivered. We call this property robustness. And we also want efficiency. We want that the number of onions that any one party has to deal with is not too much. Say polylog in the security parameter. So there are three main ways of trying to accomplish this. The first way is using general purpose NPC. This achieves anonymity from the active adversary and robustness. However, it is very inefficient. Uh, there is a known lower bound that essentially says that some people will have to talk to everyone. So this is not going to work. The second uh, approach is using a dedicated sequence of mixed servers. This approach is not going to work for us either because it doesn't scale with the size of the network. So as the network size increases, it will become more inefficient because each mix server will now have to process uh, many onions, all the onions of the participants. The third approach uh, is, are the peer-to-peer -peer solutions. And these fall into one of three categories. The first is very practical, but low security and includes solutions such as Tor. The second approach are ones that are provably anonymous and efficient. However, they're not robust, meaning that even if one message is lost, the entire protocol aborts. And finally, the third uh, category are the ones that are robust and efficient, but only differentially private as opposed to fully anonymous. In this paper, we show for the first time that it is possible to simultaneously achieve anonymity, robustness, and efficiency. The proof is by construction of a protocol, which we call Pi Butterfly. And we also prove that this protocol is near optimal by providing a nearly matching lower bound. In order to prove that Pi Butterfly is anonymous. Uh, rigorously, we formally introduced two properties called mixing and equalizing, which we prove by reduction imply anonymity. So to set the scene, let's first consider a solution that works in an easier setting, the passive adversary setting. Um, in this setting, the adversary can still observe all the network traffic and can corrupt a constant fraction of the parties, but can't control the parties to deviate from the protocol. The idea is to first choose um, a random subset of the parties to serve as mixed servers. Now, in order to create an onion for a message, each party is going to choose a routing path where each intermediary of the routing path is a mixed server chosen independently and uniformly at random. So to see this protocol in action, what ends up happening is that all of these onions that are formed are first routed to some random mixed server in the first round and then in the next round, they're routed to another 
uh, random Wix server, and so on and so forth, until they're finally received by their intended recipients. Now, intuitively, it's clear that if the size of the set of mix servers is very small, or if the length of the routing path is very long, that we can easily achieve anonymity. However, at these two extremes, it's very inefficient. Uh, in the first case, because each mix server would have to process a large number of onions at the same time. And um, in the former, in the latter case, because the round complexity would be very high. So in this prior work, we showed that we can achieve anonymity from the passive adversary when the server load, the number of onions processed by the, each server is polylog in the security parameter and the routing path is also polylog in the security parameter. However, the solution isn't anonymous in the setting that we're interested in, which is the active adversary setting. Um, and to be able to see why, we're going to describe two separate attacks. In the first attack, the adversary stealthily replaces some of the onions formed by the honest parties. And so what this achieves is that the protocol will go through because the honest parties have no idea that there is anything wrong that's happening. At the same time, uh, the onions are not missing as they should be because some of these onions are actually ones where the adversary knows the routing path. The second attack is the following. The adversary targets an honest sender, uh, in this example, P2, and drops that sender's onion at the first hop, but otherwise just follows the protocol. What this accomplishes is at the end, the adversary can observe the party who didn't receive an onion and be able to tell that this party is the recipient of the targeted sender. So here in this example, the adversary would be able to know that P2 was attempting to send a message to P3. These two attacks highlight necessary and sufficient properties for anonymity. The first attack highlights a need for mixing. An onion routing protocol mixes if it sufficiently shuffles the honest party's onions, making it infeasible for the adversary to trace the received message back to the sender. The second attack highlights a need for equalizing. An onion routing protocol equalizes if the adversary cannot determine the input, who's sending to whom, from the numbers of messages received by the parties. We provide more formal game-based definitions in the paper, and we also show that these two properties, mixing and equalize, equalizing, imply anonymity. So given those two definitions, our game plan is the following. We're going to design a protocol that both mixes and equalizes. First, how do we achieve mixing? To achieve mixing, we're going to rely on a tool that we developed in prior work called Checkpoint Onions. The idea is the following. Suppose that the intermediary iris sees a bunch of onions um, that is supposed to process and is trying to determine, is it safe to continue? Has the adversary dropped or replaced too many onions so that it is, it is better to abort at this point? Or is it the case that that hasn't happened and I should process these onions and uh, send them along to their next destinations? In order to be able to do this, we've developed something called checkpoint onions, 
which are onions that Iris expects to see in this round, and moreover are infusible to be replaced by the adversary. Um, so if the the if Iris sees that some number of uh, checkpoint onions are missing, then this number of missing checkpoints strongly correlates with the total number of onions that the adversary has robbed. So the checkpoint onions serve as an indicator to help determine whether it is safe to continue or not. Uh, and this helps with mixing. So checkpoint onions are useful for mixing, but what can we do about equalizing? To equalize, we develop a new tool called merging onions. So suppose that the sender, instead of creating an onion for the recipient R, creates two onions. Um, and these onions are designed to meet at the same intermediary I at the same round. So when these two onions arrive at I at the same round, then I can recognize that, in fact, these two onions are really the same onion and drop one of them arbitrarily and let just uh, the surviving one go through to the recipient. Why is this helpful? This is helpful because if the adversary is targeting the sender, it manages to drop one of the onions uh, before reaching I, then the other onion just simply goes through. Now, this helps with equalizing because uh, the number of messages received by R is the same as the number of messages that will be received by the recipients of non-targeted senders. Of course, the adversary can be lucky and drop both onions. So we can just do this again. Um, and in general, we can create a large set of merging onions so that it will be infeasible for the adversary to target a sender without essentially targeting all the senders. Our first construction, which is our stepping stone construction, is PyTree. And in PyTree, every honest party forms a bunch of merging onions and a bunch of checkpoint onions. And we can show that PyTree is provably anonymous when uh, the number of onions that each party is forming is sufficiently large. But unfortunately, this number is too large to be really considered efficient. So how do we make the protocol more efficient? Well, let's first think about why it is that PyTree requires so many onions. In PyTree, the goal is to mix the onions quickly so that the adversary won't be able to target a sender. But at the same time, uh, for the honest parties to be able to detect if something is going wrong and abort if necessary. Now, in PyTree, it is really difficult to be able to tell whether a sender is under attack without each party sending many onions. So, in our first attempt to make it more efficient, we're going to try routing each onion through a butterfly network first. Now, the problem with this approach is that um, the onions that are, are held between a, an intermediary I and its adversarial partner I prime, they're not going to be shuffled together in just one round. Okay, so what if we run everything through a stretched butterfly network first? This allows the onions to be shuffled back and forth between I and its partner I prime multiple times so that at the end, the onions could be shuffled together. 
However, there's still a problem because what if I and I prime are both adversarial? Then this could leak a bit of the destination. So our third attempt is to run everything through an iterated stretch butterfly network first, and this works. So this approach we're calling Pi Butterfly because we're using a butterfly network. Um, and we can show that Pi Butterfly is anonymous when each honest party generates a polylog number of onions. And uh, moreover, it's robust, um, meaning that the uh, messages are still delivered when the adversary drops at most a polylog number of onions. In conclusion, we showed that it is possible to simultaneously achieve anonymity from the active adversary, robustness, and efficiency. We did this by constructing a protocol pi butterfly, which we also show in our paper to be nearly optimal. Uh, in order to prove that our protocol is anonymous, we introduced two new properties, mixing and equalizing, which we showed implied anonymity. Uh, and this is the end of the talk. Thank you so much for your attention.